Hey everyone, I am here with 2020 Pikes Peak Apex presented by Rock Shocks winner, Russell Finsterwald. Hey, Russell. Hey, thanks for having me on, Samantha. You look like you're someplace warm and sunny right now. Yep, yeah, I'm down in Tucson, Arizona. Um, it's kind of where I spend my winters these days. Um, it's been good so far. Um, really fun riding this winter, so. Hopefully we we'll have some races to use the training at this year. Hey, I've got fingers crossed. I'm really optimistic. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> hey, are you originally from Colorado Springs? Yeah, I am. I was born and raised in Colorado Springs. So um, that's kind of why the apex is um, a race close to my heart, I guess. Um, I was super pumped when Micah told me about it um, and it was awesome to help be a part of it. And, it's great to see it um, taking shape and spreading its wings and racing on some of my favorite trails. So um, 2020 was awesome and I'm really looking forward to 2021 coming back. Yeah, I am too. Having a, a four day mountain bike challenge that close to home, super fun. And I know that you hosted some out of towners. Um, what were you most excited to show them whenever they came to stay with you for the Apex? Yeah, I think it's the cool thing about the apex is like I was literally able to ride to every stage from my house. Um, so I think it was kind of a cool way to showcase that we have so much mountain biking accessible from your front porch in Colorado Springs. Like you can ride to stay in the city and ride the Palmer Park time trial or you can get up into the high country. Um, and we saw that on the Jones Park stage as well as the Rampart stage. So it's really neat to show out of towners like just how accessible the back country is as well as quick lunch loops if you only have time for a 30 minute ride you can still hit some awesome single track you don't you don't have to go ride five hours to get in an epic mountain bike ride which is pretty unique and pretty cool I think about Colorado Springs. And where did you take them to refuel after those big days in the saddle? Oh man um, I think kind of my favorite place in the springs is um, the skirted heifer burger place downtown um, uh -huh. they make some awesome hamburgers and they have some good ice cream to go with it. Um, another favorite is Cerberus. They have a brisket grilled cheese, which definitely hits the spot after a long day in the saddle. So no shortage of good restaurant opportunities. And then of course there's some great coffee shops to kick off things in the morning. Um, I live a couple blocks away from Roscoe's. So that's kind of my go-to. They make a pretty awesome cortado. So I'd recommend it. Oh yeah. It's good to know all of those little hidden gems when you're traveling from out of town and to hear it from a local so you know that you're getting someplace. Yeah, better. definitely. Yeah, uh, it, takes, it takes time to find the good places. <laughs> it does. Yeah. So racing a stage race is a little different than racing some of those Pro XCT UCI style cross country courses that you're used to. Did you have a strategy going into the Apex? Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, in an XC, you kind of know that the race is an hour and a half long. First one across the line wins. Um, whereas a marathon, I think you kind of got to like, especially a stage race, you kind of got to play your cards throughout all four days as opposed to just going all out. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely like um, on stage two, when I went for the leader's jersey, that wasn't really something I was anticipating going into it, but I felt good and saw the other guys hurting. So I decided to use some matches and go for it. Um, so yeah, like sometimes your strategy kind of has to unfold as the race unfolds. Um, but yeah, like in a stage race, I think it's good to kind of save some matches knowing what you have the next few days and um, make sure when attacks come and everything, you're able to respond to those as opposed to on day one, just going all in for the jersey and then not having the legs the next two days wouldn't be good. So you kind of got to think what lies ahead each day. Lots of planning definitely goes into it. What would we find in your jersey pockets if you were to head up Gold Camp Road today? Um, man, I always um, I always pack a couple Cliff Bars. Um, kind of my go-to flavor lately has been the peanut butter chocolate banana. Um, so I definitely have one of those in my pocket. Um, it's always good to have a flat kit. Um, so I'd have um, some CO2, a tube. Um, those are always necess necessities when you're going out there. Um, but yeah, that's, that'd probably be about it. Always have some food and tools to get you home. All about the snacks. <laughs> yep, definitely. <laughs> All 
All right, well, which of those stages was your favorite and what about that stage made it special? Um, that's an easy one for me. The Jones Park and Counting Jacks was hands down my favorite stage. Um, and honestly, it might've been one of my favorite days ever racing on a bike. Um, one, that those trails are just so awesome. Um, it's kind of my favorite training ride anyways at home. Um, then it was just super cool, like getting to race with all my friends out there. Like those are trails I've dreamed of racing on before. So it was so cool to see it happen. And then um, my good friend, Danny Pate was the lead moto that day. So it was fun trying to chase him down on Jones Park. That was a cool challenge. Um, and like anybody who's ridden Captain Jack's knows that it is just one of the funnest mountain bike trails you can find. Um, so getting to race down that was pretty awesome. It was, I think that's been everyone's uh, favorite trail so far. I think the poll even showed that hands down that descent yep. took away all the pain of the climb. Yep. Yeah. I mean, if I, and if I could only choose one trail to ever ride for the rest of my life in Colorado Springs, that would be it. So it makes it easy. <laughs> awesome. Well, after four days of racing, what did you learn? What did you take away from the apex? Um, my key takeaway, I think, was that it is possible to hold a mountain bike stage race in Colorado Springs. Um, there's a lot of like loopholes and bureaucracy Micah kind of had to deal with to be able to make it happen. And it's just really cool to see all the local entities coming together and um, being willing to work to have a stage race in Colorado Springs. And my hope is that it grows um, even bigger, maybe more days, longer days. Um, it'll be really cool to see where the apex is in 10 years from now, I think. Um, Micah and the rest of the crew have a big vision for it. Um, and I'm really excited to see how that um, shapes up over the next few years. Yeah, it's a little sad that the pandemic affected year one, but I'm with you that having a stage race on the front range of Colorado, this thing's gonna blow up for sure. Yeah, I, I think so too. And I think like being able to do a first year event during a pandemic and execute it really well just shows um, the potential the race has, so. I think the future is bright for the apex. Yeah. So I got a few rapid fire here for you. Uh -oh. This or that, ready? <laughs> okay. Hardtail or full suspension? Uh, full suspension. 29er or 27.5? Uh, 29er all the time. Tacos or burgers? Uh, I'd have to go tacos on that one. That's hard though, but I'll go tacos. <laughs> For recovery, cold tub or compression boots? Uh, can I say both? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Lycra or baggies? Uh, I, I like to stay true to the Lycra. And IPAs or a lager? Uh, IPAs for sure. I'm with you on that one too. Um, so looking forward to 2021, you're going to be defending your title. Do you want to throw down a challenge to anyone out there? Um, I challenge anyone to try to take my Captain Jack's KOM. <laughs> I've had that, <laughs> that one for a while. So it'd be cool if someone gave it a run for its money and took it. I, I thought maybe someone would get it this year, but um, it didn't happen. So yeah, I challenge someone to take that in the stage race. <laughs> It'll be the perfect time to do so. Well, awesome. Russell, thank yeah. you for taking some time out of your day to chat with us. And we're so looking yeah, no forward problem. to having you back next year. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me and looking forward to seeing you in September. Yes. All right. We'll see you, Russ. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, Samantha.